Tex Woodshop. My name is Steve. This is the instructional video on how to assemble my wooden can crusher. If you've purchased the cutout plans on Etsy, this is the accompanying video that will allow you to take all of those parts and put them together. I sell the plans on uh, Etsy.com on my store, so you can go there. Uh, for $9, you can order the plans. I'll send them to you. And then once you cut out all your pieces, turn on this video and show you how to assemble them uh, real quick instead of trying to read through an assembly instruction booklet. So first let me show you now all the parts that you need that you should have cut out and then we'll go right into the assembly. All right, thanks. together the plunger assembly uh, itself, the actual crushing device. Alright, so we have our base and we have our side walls. Now you have to really do two things at once when you do this and I'll tell you uh, why. It's a matter of putting all of the, the washers together and all of the, um, the spacers and you can't do it once it's all pre-assembled. So we're going to take two sides. I've labeled my sides. I don't know if you can see that A and A. So I know that this side goes, this leg, this uh, wall goes with this, with this base on this side. So I use five, one and five eighth inch screws. I set them with my hand. They are pre-drilled. So now all we have to do is line up our holes and put them in. Okay, you don't want to tighten it down too much, uh, but there you go. And you can use wood glue in here if you want on your final assembly to put it all together. I'm not doing that now for the purposes of the video. But here, once you have this leg assembled, now you have to use, you have to put together the arms, the crusher legs themselves uh, with the circular spacer. And you have to do this now in order to get all of the spacers in. So. The first thing I'm going to do is feed my threaded rod through. I'm going to put a spacer in, a washer. I'm going to put my one leg in, another washer, my circular spacer, feed the rod through a little bit more, another washer, and the final leg in. Yet another washer, and then I'll be able to take my second wall and fit it in. Now I run the thread through it so it holds, it'll be okay, so I can now assemble this wall to the base. If you would assemble both walls at, uh, at once, you wouldn't be able to get all of your washers in because it would be just too tight. Okay, so we have that. Now I have to take my quarter inch nuts and I put one in on this side with my little screwdriver. I thread the rod in. I made a little uh, groove in the rod so I can actually use the screwdriver to thread it in. So I do that, so that catches, then I take the other nut and put it through. And I demonstrate this in my second video, so you can see how I do that. Uh, wooden Can Crusher Challenge 2. Okay, so once that's in, that won't come out again. So we have our plunger assembly. All right, once the, the uh, plunger assembly is put together, we're going to work on the back plate and the side walls and the guide rails for the plunger assembly. All right, now you can measure uh, what the center is, um, 
and then try to uh, attach it and then put the plunger in and see and hope that you got it right. Uh, my experience is you do it by eye so it works. You stick with numbers too much and they're going to disappoint you. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to tape my rail in and set it up. And then this way I can adjust it as I need. Now it's almost you have to do three of these rails at the same time which is a little bit um, uh, daunting. Um, these are three quarter inch wide rails. I've trimmed them down so there is space in between. So it's not going to be so tight so there's movement. So you don't have to be as uh, decimal point accurate once, once you do that, once you put these rails in. You don't want them crooked because it'll jam, but you don't have to be um, right to the, to, to the fraction of an inch here. <clears throat> so what I have here, what I'm going to do is, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my backspacer on, my guide rail on, sorry. All right, I'm going to move this down. So everything is centered, and I'm going to measure that I have an equal distance. I have just under an inch here, and I have well under an inch here, so I want to make sure I have the same amount of space. Should be about three quarters of an inch. There. about three quarters of an inch fat and when I say that I'm really talking about a sixteenth of an inch above my measurement so when I say three quarters of an inch fat that's that means it's a sixteenth of an inch larger okay so I'm about right where I want to be now this is all guesswork and trial and error to make it fit and run smoothly but I'm pretty confident, and we'll see. I'm pretty confident that that's, that's decent. Now this one is taped, and what I'll do is I'll put this here on there, run this this way, and make sure that while it runs, this is not lifting or binding on the plunger. The wall itself is not lifting or binding on the plunger and that I have enough space in between each one. And that one looks like I do. So with that put that in and remove the tape. Now if it was binding I would adjust it and retape it until I had it right. So with this, I'm going to put this wall in, and secure it so I have it. So I've got the back, and I've got the one side. And now I'll secure the other side. And this, right now, a good thing. It's a little, it's slightly a little tight. I'm not liking it. Okay? So when you have that, you can actually micro adjust if you need to with a razor blade because all this needs to do 
is guide it up and down so it doesn't get jammed up. So I'm actually taking like a 32nd of an inch off. Okay. So now we look. Now we've got it perfect. Okay. No, it's not binding. So now we'll do the same thing here. We'll set this up where it needs to go. All right, that's in the center. We'll tape it. I'm holding it down. To make sure it works. So we can say it's too high. Okay, so I've moved it down on the tape. And that right there looks pretty decent. So from here, I'm going to tap it in. Move the tape. And if I have to, once I put this wall on, I'll again adjust it with a razor blade. But that looks pretty decent. Okay, so here, and here. Okay, so here's the big test. Does it work? Working. Let's put it all together. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Right, so once we have that, Take the base plate, put the base plate on. Base plates on. Let's do it again. Now this is going to fit in a little tight. You have to adjust it. And then once it's in, right? There you go. So it's going to come right out. And that's what you're looking for. Right? So there we go with that. Okay, so you put that back in. can assemble our arm. And here we use, I only use two washers per on the inside. I don't use them on the outside. The, the acorn nuts or the cap nuts are a little decorative, so you don't need to put a, a washer on there. Uh, but if you do, make your two and a half inch rod a little bit longer because that takes up some space. All right, so what I do is I put my cap nut on. Put a spacer on. Put this, the center piece in. 
of the arm, the plunger arm. Put another spacer on. Push that through. Take another cap nut and thread it on. So we have that. Okay. Uh, so once we have our arm assembly here, we need to attach the receivers. So the first thing we do is take our screws, set them in. We don't want to tighten them down all the way just yet. But the first one we can tighten down once they're both in. Okay, that's in, that's in. So we take our threaded rod with our cap nut. All right, screw that in. Put it through, put a spacer. the arm through, put another spacer. Now we put our last receiver on with the spacer and put that through. And now we can assemble. If we were to put both receivers on, we wouldn't be able to fit the spacers in. That's why we do it this way. That's why it's important to pre-drill and pre-assemble so you know all of these things. Then you take your final nut, screw it down, hand tighten it. You don't want to machine tighten it because you want it to be able to move. And there you go. Now, one of the things, let me see if you can see it on the video. I'll lower it. Okay. If you go past the threshold of the plunger uh, walls, you may get that, and that will jam. Now, there's no real reason to go that high, okay, um, because the can is only five inches, six inches tall, so it's not a problem. But if you go that high inadvertently, that could happen. What you can do right in here is you can put a screw or a block of wood, a piece of wood that will stop it from going that high. Uh, the problem with that is if for any reason you want to take this apart, uh, you got to take that out, you got to remember, or you just get used to putting a can in, raising it that high, and then crushing. Okay? I like to keep the, that little stopper out because if I need to take it apart or do something, I can, I can just take it apart that easy. Okay, and there you have it. So I hope it works for you. If you have any questions or concerns about anything, give me a call. You can reach out to me at Timberjacks, uh, on my Timberjack site, uh, customer service at timberjackswoodshop.com. Uh, send me an email or yeah, just write to me. Okay, and remember I sell the cutout pieces, uh, the cutout plans on Etsy.com. So you can order them right from there. And good luck. All right, thanks again.